Sniper's Hide here with David Tubb at the King of Two Mile competition in Raton, New Mexico. Uh, we're going to get David's take on this competition. He shot this match over the, uh, during the week, and we're going to go through his equipment and how he goes about tackling this type of course of fire. David, appreciate you here and, and like to get your take on ELR shooting. Thanks, Frank. Of course, I'm, I have shot, obviously, a lot of 1,000-yard stuff in the past, uh, competitive high-power shooter. And so when I got the inkling that I was going to shoot this King of Two Mile match, uh, and I shoot some 2,000-yard stuff somewhat often, but I don't shoot 3,500 yards, I go, what, what do I need to do? And obviously, I wanted to shoot this match with my new rifle platform. And so I'm limited to a Lapua head diameter. So, so I said, okay, let's take a Lapua case and let's wildcat it. And that's, a, let's say they do a 338 Lapua improved. They blow it out, so on and so forth. And I go, so, and of course, I do a lot of gunsmithing work on my own for my own product. So I go, let's go ahead and let's just use a 375 barrel. So I necked the 338 Lapua up to 375. And so I shot a Lapua improved that holds 110 grains of powder. I shoot about 109 grains of H1000, shoots a, a, a flat line bullet that weighs 364 grains, and it goes about 2,900 feet a second, and it has zero pressure, and you can shoot it all day long. Now, the people I'm shooting against are shooting two or 300 feet per second faster, but their rifles weigh 30, 40, 50 pounds. My rifle weighs less than 20 pounds, with the exception that I take this carbide weight and you can see I clamp it on, and this thing weighs five pounds. So that helps mitigate some of the recoil. So further down the road, obviously we're loading bullets. We're trying to shoot a muzzle brake. I am shooting long, long distances, and obviously I can load good ammo, but I hook a magneto speed on the front of the new rifle. This is, by the way, called a tub gun platform. And you can see that I have a little extension. My magneto speed hangs out here in the, in the air, but it's very sturdy and, and so on, somewhat because I have a longer forehand tube. But when you're shooting at a 24-inch tall target at, say, 2,500 yards, and your ammo, I, I noticed the last time that I shot, I shot 11 shots, and my standard deviation was 4.3. My average velocity was 28.87, so that's very close to 2,900. But if you shoot a shot and you held in the middle at 2,400 or 2,500 yards on a 24 inch plate and you shot low, you would naturally go, well, I need to hold higher. But if you look at your velocity and let's say instead of 2,887, that rifle went 2,877, okay? 10 feet per second slower. Well, that's enough loss in velocity to make you shoot on the bottom edge of the plate so it's out of your normal operating range so you shouldn't be touching your knob and I don't see anybody doing that because simply because their guns aren't configured quite the same way mine are. So I think that's an advantage for my side. Um, I think that for this sort of shooting I have obviously have a bipod that comes with my rifle but it seems to me that the bench rest bipods which the kind of work like this, like goal wings, so to speak, seem to be advantageous. They're more quicker to sh they're quicker to adjust to shoot. I still like this bipod for field use. And of course, the reason is, and of course this gun is unloaded, is because you can adjust the heights and you can pan and tilt and so on and so forth. And not to mention the fact it weighs 24 ounces where everybody else's. And of course, you could take this off and fold it up and so on and so forth. Let's put something that's real big. <clears throat> Obviously, this is a single shot rifle at that point, so we used a single shot loading block as opposed to a magazine. And uh, used an eight twist barrel. Uh, we used a muzzle brake that tries to keep us on target. And even with this, if you position yourself correctly and shoot this uh, 20 pound rifle, you can keep this big old cartridge on and certainly in the area of the target and spot your impacts. Uh, and of course, the, you know, when you shoot a long way away, you're, you're obviously, from my perspective, obviously I have my own reticle system and I have my own ballistics program. So let's say I can shoot to 2,400 yards using just this alone. And, uh, and obviously I've got dots and so on in there that uh, compensate for boundary, for, for gyroscopic properties of bullet flight. But let's say I'm going to shoot further than 2,400 yards per se, or maybe 3,000 yards. So there's a new product out uh, made by a guy named John Baker with Tacom HQ. 
And this is this lets you adjust, or he can adjust it when he sends it to you. It fits on the front of your scope, and it adds when you let's just when you snap it on. Of course, there's a couple of bolts that hold it on. It changes the elevation in mils or minutes, whatever you desire. I, I'm working in mils, so let's say this changes at 20 mils. And so now, what I'm able to do is let's say I shoot, let's say I shoot 2,500 yards, and I have to come up 20 mils. So, and that's kind of limits me because some of these scopes have limited vertical movement. So now I could actually put this on, come back down to 20 mils, shoot 2,400 yards, and then now there's a target at 3,000. Well, I have a 20 mil boost to start with, and I come up whatever number of mils it takes to get me to 3,000. Of course, this unit has to be cal collimated to your scope and so on and so forth, but it works extremely well. Along the same lines, I make a line of bubble levels, uh, and I'm about to change and put a little bit more sensitive bubble level in. And this is very interesting. If you see this big old bubble level, you see it rolling back and forth. Of course, I wear reading glasses because I'm over 50 years old. But everybody, most everybody's bubble level is a one degree bubble level. This is what they call or, or a one minute bubble level. This is a 10 second bubble level. Well, now, while this is not extremely sensitive like a steric level they leveled mach precision machines with, this is much harder to center and keep centered than the normal level that most people are supplying. So this, in fact, is very important to also have shooting extreme distance. So when you couple all that together, we have a cartridge with an exceptional BC bullet, this bullet, and we have a little nose ring on it, a new little uh, invention that we've uh, filed on that helps the drag, but this bullet combined with an eight twist, you know, everybody's going faster twist barrels because it helps the bullet pass through the trans transonic subsonic region. Uh, obviously a great rifle platform. I got to put a couple in there. <laughs> and then, you know, then, then we put up a, 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 this uh, Tacom HQ mount on the front. We're getting our data every shot. We're, we just got to follow the pattern, you know. And we need, obviously, you need good spotters. Yes. You know, that makes a great and deal of difference. And a little luck with the time of day and, you shoot And a little luck, here. yeah. Because you know, I'm the bridesmaid in this deal. I got left out because yep, yep. I was number 11. But, you know, hey, this is my first attempt at this. Right. So, uh, and I learned a lot of stuff. And, you know, it, it's a bit of the luck of the relay here, too, to some degree. So Because the relays this morning had next to no wind. Now the wind's coming up. Any relay now sure. is going to suffer in the wind. So it's definitely a little luck in the draw on the time. Absolutely. So I so, see that for so. a fact. But, I mean, you're set up for success in every way possible and, from the bullet to the rifle barrel and, to, to monitoring everything. So yeah, I, and, into your scope. Sure. And, and from my perspective, I want to shoot this course of fire with a rifle that I would use in the field. Sure. I can I could mount this up. Obviously, I probably wouldn't have the the uh, the <laughs> magneto speed on, but I can carry it. We can shoot it, you know. And of course, this rifle would go from this cartridge, uh, you know, with we move the barrel out, so on and so forth, with a barrel extension. And now we're shooting a 6XC in 30 minutes and a PRS match. Right. So this is a it's versatile as opposed to that rifle. One one style, one concept, 30, 40, 50 pounds. And you know that's what it's, you're stuck with. It's an with. XLRF class rifle. That's right. They're shooting exactly. And you have a practical field rifle, a practical that, switch barrel. That's rifle. right. That I'm trying to mitigate or, or, or not mitigate, but to use as 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 an all-around rifle. That's yes. the concept for me. Yeah. So anyway, um, I I had a great time doing it. I'll probably do it again next year. It's made made me look at things differently. The first thing is I thought a 6XC or a 308 was a big case, and now I goes. No, this is not. Of course, the cases out there's 50 cal cases, and right. you know it's big things and 416, right. 375 lethal mag. All that's right. All it goes that. and goes and goes. Yeah. But you know, main thing is to be able to hit something. Uh, you know, and and I, you know, coaching's good. My one of my teammates I shot with, we hit the cold bore shot yesterday. I was coaching him, mm -hmm. 1691 yards in the wind, or a shot on a little 16 inch plate. Nice. That's the kind of one stuff you're looking for. That's you what go. you're looking for. That's right. So. Definitely. Well, that's awesome. I appreciate you taking your time and showing us that, and uh, it, it's always a pleasure. Thank you. Thank you, Frank, very much.